A lot of people have wondered over the years, why the fuck did Sonic look so weird on the American box art? I mean, as a kid it didn't really bother me at all. That's just what Sonic looked like as far as I was concerned. I'm sure you're aware by now it's a time-honored tradition in American box art to make cute characters look edgier, and to just make it worse in general. But looking back, it seems odd they even bothered slightly redesigning the character for the American release. And it was just for promotional material. The in-game sprites are the same for all regions. It was a seemingly unnecessary change, especially considering Sonic was already designed with Western audiences in mind. But Sega of America decided he needed to be slightly tweaked, and artist Greg Martin was given the job of drawing the version of Sonic that would be used in American advertisements. I've heard a fair amount of complaints about American Sonic's design over the years, like his fat fingers, or pregnant belly, or bow-legged posture, or tiny feet, or how weirdly shiny he is, and he also has the exact same smile in literally every single picture, which gets a little repetitive. I mean, sure, Japanese Sonic is usually smirking too, but he's actually capable of other expressions. But perhaps the main point of contention is the way his spines are portrayed, in this weird kind of mohawk style. It's because of this redesign that we saw the prominence of the mohawk design in Sonic's portrayal in the western produced media like the Deke cartoons, as well as the early days of the Archie comic. And I gotta say, I am not a big fan of the mohawk look. And you're probably not gonna find too many people out there willing to defend it. I mean, maybe it's just my nostalgia talking, but I do think it has a certain amusing 90s charm to it. However, that does make it seem kind of dated now, and it is clearly inferior to the original Japanese design. And while it is easy for me to say it looks too 90s now, during the 90s nobody was complaining. Something I always thought was odd was how Robotnik's eyes were portrayed as gaping black voids, which I found rather unsettling as a child. I mean, Eggman was clearly portrayed as wearing glasses in the Japanese art, but in-game it wasn't quite as clear. You can't see the bridge of his glasses on his in-game sprite, and while his eyes were dark blue in Sonic 1, they are black in Sonic 2 and 3, so his in-game appearance doesn't technically contradict the terrifying eyeless version of Robotnik on the American cover. I'm not positive, but I think this cover is the reason most of the Western media gave Robotnik black eyes, although usually with red pupils. I have to admit is a look I'm somewhat fond of. Interestingly, the UK's Sonic the Comic started off with black no-eyes Robotnik before switching to the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog style early on. I used to think the black eyes on the Sonic 2 cover was some kind of accident or misconception by Sega of America, but it is possible it was a deliberate attempt to make Robotnik more menacing. I mean, he's not too scary in most Japanese art, in fact he's smiling a lot of the time. The creepy American box art version is always furiously gritting his teeth. There's also some official art by Sega of America which shows him with beady black eyes which was sometimes used in advertisements as well. Sega of America didn't just have their own design for Sonic, they actually had their own canon backstory and everything, which was detailed in the series bible, an internal design document and reference material for potential licensees. There are three versions of the Sonic bible available online. The earliest of which is just a 13-page draft of the origin story for Sonic and Robotnik by Madeline Schroeder, the product manager for Sonic the Hedgehog, and Al Nilsson, the director of marketing. In this story, Sonic was born as a brown hedgehog named Sonny in a small town in Nebraska. He lives with his mom and five sisters under a hedge near the local burger joint, and his goal in life was to be an Olympic runner. He ends up meeting and befriending the friendly Dr. Ovi Kintobor, and it was during one of Kintobor's experiments on a treadmill that Sonic ran fast enough to turn himself blue. Eventually, after an experiment gone wrong involving the Chaos Emeralds and a hard-boiled egg, Kintobor is transformed into the evil Dr. Ivo Robotnik. By the last of these drafts, some of the more questionable elements had been changed, like Sonic was living on a planet called Mobius instead of Nebraska, and removing Sonic's weird hedge family and instead focusing on his animal friends that appear in the game. But most of the Kintobor backstory remained and was considered canon in the West during the 90s. We only know it was canon because of a 16-page promotional comic that was released in fall of 1991, well before their partnership with Archie. It details the Kintobor origin story, and the comic has become quite rare these days. It was also partially included in various other publications at the time, like the October 1991 issue of EGM. However, most of these versions only included the first seven pages. 
Interestingly enough, despite writing this new backstory for Sonic and putting out a promotional comic depicting it, none of this Kinto War stuff ever actually made it into any of the manuals for the games, and none of the Sonic shows or comics that came out in America really referenced or made use of it either. However, that wasn't the case in the UK. A book titled Stay Sonic came out, which provided various game tips and information about the series, and it included a near-verbatim retelling of the Kinto War origin story found in the Sonic Bible Draft 2. This book had a strong influence on Fleetway's Sonic the Comic, which would launch a few months later, which would go on to use a version of the Kinto War origin story. Draft 2 also contained official Western names for Sonic's animal friends, including Johnny Lightfoot for the rabbit, and Porker Lewis for the pig, which would go on to be featured in Stay Sonic and used in Sonic the Comic for characters as well. It also listed the name of the squirrel as Sally Acorn, which would of course go on to be used for the Sally character featured in the Archie comics and the Saturday morning cartoon. So this Kinto War stuff was technically considered canon in the West all the way up until Sonic Adventure came out and they decided to sync up with the Japanese canon, including ditching the name Robotnik for Eggman. In this snapshot of Sega's official website from 1997, you can see they still had the Kinto War origin story listed under Sonic's biography, along with plenty of other interesting information from the Sonic Bible. As far as comparing the actual box art goes, while I do actually like Greg Martin's illustrations, there's something kind of great about the crazy colors and geometric shapes of the Japanese covers. I do think the black background works far better on the Sonic and Knuckles cover though. Also, I'm mostly just looking at the main series of games, but I gotta say, the Japanese cover for Sonic Spinball is pretty rad. It's also funny how it points out the game is from the USA on the back. Something kind of odd about the Western cover is that for the Genesis it uses the standard Black Eyes Robotnik, but the Game Gear and Master System covers use the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog style instead. I also thought it was kind of weird about the European covers that they started off with the Japanese design for Sonic on Sonic 1, and then for Sonic 2 they switched over to the American design, and then for Sonic 3 they had their own original art, which I always thought looked kind of funny for some reason. Not sure why, but maybe it's Knuckles. Something about his face just cracks me up. My absolute favorite thing about the Japanese covers is that they usually have some kind of awesome motivational text in English. Like check this out. Don't just sit there and waste your precious time. When you want to do something, do it right away. Do it when you can. It's the only way to live a life without regrets. I mean, goddamn. Thanks for the solid life advice, Sonic the Hedgehog box art. The same text can be found on the cover of Sonic 2 as well. The Sonic CD cover has some pretty solid advice as well. To live a life of power, you must have faith that what you believe is right even if others tell you you're wrong. The first thing you must do to live a life of power is to find courage. You must be ready to reach beyond the boundaries of time itself. And to do that, all you need is the will to take the first step. Wow. Powerful stuff, guys. However, I find the back of the case even more interesting. Check out this quote. Ask not what others can do for you, but what you can do for others. Sonic. Uh, what? I mean, I guess in Sonic's universe, he was the first one to say this or something? Okay. Unfortunately, there's no fun English text on the cover of Sonic 3. However, the cover of Sonic and Knuckles did not disappoint. Sonic races through the green fields. The sun races through a blue sky filled with white clouds. The ways of his heart are much like the sun. Sonic runs and rests, the sun rises and sets. Don't give up on the sun. Don't make the sun laugh at you. I honestly don't know what to say. Nothing I say could be funnier than that text. That's what they call a checkmate. Anyway, something I thought was interesting was the classic Sonic from Sonic Generations actually takes some design cues from Greg Martin's American Sonic design. It's very apparent when you compare the eyes. He's got much more pronounced eyebrows, like the American version, and this little brow fur between his eyes is only featured on the American version. It's totally smooth for the Japanese depiction of classic Sonic. And his ears are also slightly bent forward at the top, unlike the Japanese version which has straight ears. In conclusion, 
This video was just an excuse to talk about that weird fucking text on the Japanese covers because I really love it and I wish more people knew about it.